All right, cool. So we are officially recording. The first thing uh, before we just start kind of talking podcast style, guys, is I want to make sure that everybody got their answer or their questions answered as it relates to how to use Slack and MIC. So does any member have a question? Post them in the webinars channel. And does anybody on YouTube who's listening on have any questions about operating at MIC? We can talk about like um, uh, some charts and stuff, but like, do you guys have any questions about like the analytics or how do I see this in my account or how do I do, et cetera, et cetera, like the videos tab and the library and stuff. If you don't, then we could just, we could just talk on other stuff. I don't know if Bow's going to be available today. We'll see. What do you guys want to talk about today, Ben? I'm here for you guys. So do you want to talk about certain topics like on these meme stocks, it's going crazy and things like that, or Dude, look at this Tesla, man. This is crazy. <laughs> Side, do you watch you, you hockey show? I'll ask you guys questions. Everybody's so focused on the meme stocks, man. <laughs> Nobody, everybody's like, dude, I'll, I'll hit you up after I'm done trading. Yeah, man, it's good shit. Well, if you guys have no questions, then I can just rant on some stuff, definitely. Hey, Tosh, what does your process look like in big caps when it comes to day trading or do you swing? I only swing big caps. So what I do, brother, is I actually, um, hold on one second. Let me pull that back up. I'll just kind of show you what my day looks like to be on. Da, da, da. So let me show you my favorite setups for small caps and what I still look forward to this day, even though I'm, I wouldn't classify myself as a small cap trader anymore. Uh, just, just if certain setups show up, then yes. But so number one, uh, how do you minimize out of this shit? Hold on, guys. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, you guys can see that's cool. So the first thing that I love every single day in small caps, which I still wait for every single day, are basically one of three things. And, and it's really like it's got to be a really good setup. But again, a stock, let me full screen this. Um, let's blow this up again. So when a stock has like its ran pre-market, and is opening way, way, way below. I like these, like the outermost lines. So that's that's just simple, like a low hanging fruit, outermost lines, day two or day one. But it's really just the outermost lines on something like this. This is probably the best example I have recorded um, on something like this. I can just show you guys quickly. But you know, I mean, and this isn't even a perfect example, but it's symbolic of what it is. Stock runs huge, tanks hard, opens. Wait for the outer fucking lines. It's just resistance. It's literally that. Number two, this is just an inflated um, thing. This is my favorite. So this is it. This is my number one favorite setup these days, equally, equally mixed with death candles. So number one, you have the outermost line. Uh, and sometimes I don't even trade those because I'm so focused on big caps, but the outermost line, this is what I look for every single day. They're kind of far and few between, but when they show up, I've never seen a more guaranteed trade in trading than this and the death candle. So so, dude, I'm, I'm serious. Like, you have a stock huge up pre-market, craters hard, doesn't play ping pong or even touch VWAP until the open ramps up to VWAP. This is such a big resistance point. It's 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 phenomenal. Like, it's insane how accurate this setup works. And uh, me and Joe tested that over years, and it works. And then again, just like, this is another example. This is the same thing. So this is, the, you see what I'm saying? Up big, tanks hard doesn't touch VWAP for like an hour and then runs up to VWAP and gets crushed. It's as simple as that. Just put your fantasy orders out. So it's basically, if anything, it's all just fantasy orders. So if you go back to the first one, this is just fantasy orders at the outer lines. And then this is just fantasy orders of VWAP. Like it's literally just fucking fantasy orders, bro. It's that simple. And then number, number three is obviously the death. Channel. I'll never ignore a death channel ever. I'm in big caps. Yes. Cause they don't operate the same, but in small, this is it. So those are the three things I look for every single day in small caps. If those don't show up, I don't give a fuck. And then what I'm doing on big caps are much, 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 much bigger time frames. So if I go to like the five-year chart, guys, on something like Tesla, oh, sorry, hold on. Um, let me add style, do, do, do. biggies. So as you guys can see, this is one of the only, so I'll go to a year chart. This is one of the only setups I actually like rely on an indicator, like big time. And what I'm looking for on big caps are really good companies that are super oversold. So if I go to like a five-year chart, actually, you guys can see the oversold moments instead of the overbought because I don't short big caps. Oh, hey, what's up, Bal? Hold on, buddy. Let me see if you're... 
there. One sec, guys. We're going to get Bell on. All right, he's not in yet. We'll get him in a sec. But yeah, so so I, I love RSI. So that's like what I'm waiting for. And then arguably um, day trade to longer time term time frames on options. But that's uh, that's probably the least I use. But the um, one sec. Yeah. So as you guys, um, as you guys can see, it's, it's, it, it's a lot, it's a lot. So if small caps are slow, there's something else to do. If even big caps are slow, then you can swing. Like there's so much to do, man. And that's what I wanted to kind of really kind of grow as a trader over the years is, Hey man, when one market's slow, I don't want to cry about it. Like I want opportunity. So what should I do? So that's why I kind of navigated towards that as well. Hold on guys. One sec. Um, Modern Rock. Bow, where are you at, buddy? You should be in. All right, you hear me? Yeah, I'm making you a panelist right now. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Can you guys hear Bow? Yeah, can you hear me? Hopefully. You hear me? Nice. Nice. I was, uh, I was talking about, dude, Tesla's a monster right now. Oh, dude, Tesla's fucking killing everybody. GME's killing everybody. Uh, AMC's killing everybody. <laughs> I know, bro. I know it's a crazy market. I was like, I was like, dude, there's no way Val's coming on today. I don't think he has fucking time. I was like, dude, I was so busy. Jeez. I was like, he's probably got 10,000 channel trades out there in Fantasy Origin City. Uh, yeah, man. Fuck. Uh, a lot of trades today. But I... Well, it, and one of the things I was covering earlier about, maybe if you want to talk on this, uh, if you have some time or some focus is dude, days like this, when people are shorting, it's like, dude, there's not one reason you should be shorting on days like this, but waiting for the confirmation days, whether it's overhead and outer lines or waiting for that first red day, that's really going to give you some horsepower on the short. I see so many people dude, on Twitter blowing up on days like this. I'm like, why are you fighting this shit? Because it's up. Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> just, just anything. There's a GME yesterday, and there's a lot like Tesla looked like this. A lot of charts look like this yesterday. Oh, it's, uh, easier said than done. Uh, and I said, well, if you follow the rules, if you follow the fucking rules, you will be okay. The problem is the FOMO kicks in. They let you win the first few trades, and then it traps you. That's that's the problem. So if you take a look at all these stocks, these stocks, pull it up, man. AMC ran at yeah, 10. yeah, yeah. Here, I'll it's actually do the hour. Screen. One sec, yeah. I'll do them all. Bring up AMC. If you just follow the zombie rule. About no shorting, these uh, be careful about shorting and zombie hour. Take a look at when it started moving, man. Yep, yep. I'm gonna blow this up for you guys. Hold on, I'll just do two. I mean, uh, I'm not messing much with AMC because it's a strong stock, but this is the stock I've been uh, scalping. <laughs> Dude, seriously. So this was GME today, guys. This was AMC, and then what Bao's talking about is like, let me just draw the line for you. Is after the first hour. Look at the time it goes, man. It's like 1040 or something like that. 1045 is just fucking, that's right. That's the zombie hour, man. It, it traps, it traps. You think you're good. Boom. So well, then whatever. Did, if you look at my chart, I actually covered uh, the zombie hour. And then, um, and then, but I had, but they kept on going up. But the thing, the good thing is when you trade these stocks, man, you have to understand the range before you trade any stock, figure out what the range is. What, what is the possible how far can it go up and down, right? That's your range. And then you size accordingly, guys. Small size, wider stops. For cases of meme stocks like GME, dude, I'm, I am at one fourth my bullet size normally. You know what I'm saying? So I have fucking, so, because GME is fucking gonna move fucking five points against me. So I don't know where it's going. So what I do is I size down to the point where, dude, if I make a fucking mistake, I won't blow up. Knock on wood. So if you take a look at, um, here's another one, man. I want to do this one. I did good. <laughs> you can see this. Uh, let me pull this shit in. Yep, Edge Talk. I was going to mention that, bro. I was going to mention you use the outermost lines, then you wrap up by zombie. You did exactly what process entails, man. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Another one of those fucking. <laughs> but I mean, outside of Corley, I mean, I'm, somebody I'm... get this Christmas tree some ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's crazy. I, I would. I did well in this stock, but uh, 
Because, I mean, every watch, I took some off, and then, dude, it just cratered down. So. But, bro, I mean, I mean, look, it, the story writes itself. Look at this. Look. Bing, 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 bing. Like, how could you not scale that area? You know what I mean? It's so like, the dude. Is, I mean, I, the, the thing is, I scale, I, I size down even further. That's dude, but I mean. look, but, but, Bao, look at this. It's like, dude, people think this is rock as I find the areas of resistance, find the areas of support, and that's your guide. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, so dude. Easy. <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's the easiest job in the world. No, we don't want to make it sound like uh, that. I mean, I got the thing, the thing with this though, man. So what, what I do is this guy. So I locate what I want to do as my max size. Okay. And then that's your allowance. So think about it, you get $20 a month or a week, whatever you get for allowance as a kid, then you can budget. The law problem is this guys. Uh, we don't like to budget people fucking overspend their means. They use credit cards to put them, you know, go into debt, things like that guys. So same thing with trading. Okay. You have to budget your bullets. If you want to be in a thousand shares, that's all you need. That's all you can do. You can blow your wad at the first chance you get, or you can start saving money and you know using two hundred uh, bullets and have five bullets, right? Things like that. So, learn how to allocate your trades, just like allocating your budget financially or a kid as an allowance, right? Dude, a hundred percent, man. So that's the thing. People look at this and they go, "Bow, you fucking suck." I mean, dude, I. I do suck. I mean, fuck, I, if I was good, I'd do fucking 5,000 shares, boom, at the top. But I don't know where the fucking top is. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, everybody trades differently, man. You you, you can't scatter. Sc you know, the, the key is this. It's all position sizing. Okay, you have no idea how many how many shares I have. It could be like fucking 200 shares each bullet. Or like GME, I use sometimes like 50 fucking shares or 100 shares, right? Yep. So it's not going to blow me. I, I, I don't add more than, you know, so I'm not in like fucking some guy on Twitter says, dude, I fucking, I can't get out. I was too big. I mean, I'm trading GME. I can barely get out of fucking few hundred shares. How the fuck are you trading 5,000 shares, right? It's just not liquid enough. Things like that. So you, first of all, you have to understand the liquidity of the stock you're trading. That's why they, uh, the term is like liquidity trap. You hear that a lot. You can Google what that liquidity trap is when it fucking, it, that when the volume just dies out to nothingness and you think it's going to go down, but dude, then some guy gets in and squeezes your ass and there's no offers at all to get out and to cover to. So, so the key guys is number one, risk management above all else. Cause I don't know what the hell is going to happen. All I can control in trading, all I control, all I can control in trading, all I can control in trading is risk management, right? That's the only thing that you can fucking control. You can't control the fucking price unless you are a manipulator. So that's why that's why scaling is just so important, man. Knowing where to scale is number one, and then learning how to scale it. But you got it, like you, you, you dude. When, in the beginning, man, when you see stocks tank at the open, you just want to chase it because you don't know better. You go, hey, the stock is weak. Let me get in. And then obviously, like we talked about earlier, stocks don't go straight up or straight down. You got to wait for those areas that they retest. Like knowing how to scale it, you know. I mean, there's other. I mean. Some stocks look prettier than others, you know, like, dude, let me see. Let me just show some of the stuff I did. Then you guys can ask questions. So, I mean, some of the stuff is much easier, so I can just lay it out there. But some of these require micromanagement. And that's why I really hate trading these micromanaged stocks. But but I'll show you what I posted in the, the main chat, guys. Let me see. Today now, was this not is, an easy this day is... by any means. I'm green and thank God I'm green, but dude, this thing is you know, not, not fucking good guys. Yeah. The Mullen, this is just straight up, you know, outer line channel as well. Right. It's like you have top, 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 top. So it's going to be within this general area. I mean, and then you risk, you know, over here. Yeah. Some are just so much smoother than others, man. I tell you, welcome to trading. Some days you make money with your eyes closed. The other days you really got to fight for it. Fox is only on day two guys. A lot of people have thought it's the end, but if you count it, it's day two, guys. Tomorrow, the thing is today, the day that everyone that people thought it would die, it trapped once again. And dude, who the fuck knows? Some of these mini stocks went for fucking a week straight. Who knows? Bro, right? that's what that's what I was saying earlier. That was the first thing I said in this webinar. I was like, I don't like this today, man. Like tomorrow, like wait for the day where it starts to really show some weakness, man. Then you have just such an easier short, man. People yeah, got smoked today. Well, the this. thing is, the thing is, it's like, 
It gives you false hope, lets you win the beginning. That's how the trap happens, right, guys? So you have to be very fucking careful. So what happens when you start winning, you start throwing rules out of the window because you think that you are, you know, like the greatest trader in the world that you can get out of any situation. So, um, and then you can't believe that they fucking trick you because every time you fucking get out for a loss, it goes, you know, it goes back into your favor and you're like, fuck, I just stopped out at the bottom or the top. Uh, the only thing they could do, guys, is just like, you have to follow the rules. Uh, the, the, dangerous, the, the dangerous habit you have is breaking a rule and getting away with it and getting rewarded with it. Oh, shit, I'm out. Fuck. Okay, well, I guess I guess it's not bad if I fucking got out of GME. Well, I covered GME, so I mean, I'm, I did well in this. Small scaling. Whew. Not nice, easy, man. Nice. All uh, right, so let's take some questions. Um, today's a very dangerous game. Uh, I'm, so today's trading made me understand the movement of the stock. I didn't size them up much today because I'm like, dude, I, I didn't think today would the day that they die. Uh, today's only day two. Um, I have to admit, though, I had so much fucking FOMO when some of these stocks are going down. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I missed it. I missed it. And so that's what happens, man. When you get fucking FOMO, you're like, I don't want to miss the next one. And then it traps. That's how you get yourself, man. That's how you mentally get that's yourself. That's why you have to, you have to fucking... You know, control your, this is why having a tab is important, guys. And staying within your niche. So, I mean, I, the only stocks I lose are fucking these stupid ass meme stocks. Today I was okay on it, thank God. But, you know, I'm, I'm trading my bread and butter shit. I'm okay. Knock on wood, right? Because look at CELZ. When the shit is broken, it's so fucking easy. Not easy, but simple, right? You short when it pops up to, to the, you know, uh, to the, this thing is have not, have been, CL, CELZ has been trying to break VWAP for all afternoon. It's under VWAP. So all I'm doing is I'm shorting near the VWAP. If it breaks VWAP and it holds VWAP, I'm out. That's it. Hey, you so just get out. You define your risk. You define your plan. It's as simple. It's as simple as that. Yep, now you simple. obey it, though. Now it's you abide by your plan. Never easy. Simple is never easy, but, you know. Yeah, simple is never easy, but simple is simple. Boredom trading, get a tab, man. We talk about this all the time. Get a fucking tab, jerk off, go to the fucking porno site, do what you needed to. Yeah, here, I'll show you the porno site. You should, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I keep saying, online shopping is cheaper. Get the fuck out of the house. Go spend some fucking money. Go do whatever you need to do to get the hell out. And, you know, I, I, you know, I help members. I answer DMs. Uh, Tosh goes and does webinars. Alex does whatever he does, you know, goes eat a cookie, whatever, you know, do what you need to do to avoid that. Cause I'm telling you, man, the best traders in the world are not necessarily the smartest. They are the most disciplined guys. Discipline yeah. is the reason why Alex is kicking butt. Uh, doesn't mean that he's the smartest. No, no one's the smartest anything, but you know what, man, I'm pretty damn sure that he's like the top percentile in discipline. Bro, close your charts and go here and you can lose your life. You can lose like four hours, bro. <laughs> Seriously. Go, dude, just go to watch videos trade of uh, my investing club videos. I mean, if you're really into, curious, if you're really into trading guys, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. You have How bad to do you want it? How bad do you want it? You watching porn or you watching the accelerator course? Uh, for me, and sometimes I look at my charts and I jerk off, man. Shit, man. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Dog gave himself a good <laughs> whack on this chart right here. I'm not joking, man. I, I, at the end of the day, sometimes I pull some of these charts and I go, what the fuck, dude? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, this is a perfect 10 model. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's hot? Let me show you my charts. <laughs> I'll show you sexy. I mean, it's, just, it's just fucking sexy, dude. <laughs> you can't, you got right? like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. a sexy one. Man, I love this chart gamma. <laughs> uh, you know, any questions, guys? Guys, questions, questions. Hey, oh, uh, someone on YouTube. Can you describe how low hanging fruit plays? Dude, we have whole videos on that, guys. We're not going to go through what low hanging fruit is a continuation short sell side. That basically says, you know, you ride the trend down. This is what we teach people every day. The best short strategies are the, are the to short the, 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 the uh, stocks that used to be strong the day before, but now has been forgotten. So we call those like the side plays, you know, or the side chick or whatever, right? Yep. 
Um, it's like you're, it's, <laughs> I don't want to, I can't use these analogies. <laughs> oh God. And look, guys, look how many pages on low hanging fruit we have. We have a ton. Yeah, guys. Um, we have some videos on the free, uh, website too, man. So trading porn, man, that's what we should do, huh? Trading porn. Yeah, porn. seriously. Muscle memory. <laughs> that's one muscle I remember. Questions, guys, questions. Hit us with your questions. If this is your passion and you want it, you'll watch the videos and look at your charts and other people's charts in MIC. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah, man. I mean, the thing is, like, dude, before, before MIC, dude, no, man, I was one of the first people to post daily charts. People talk so much. I hate Twitter. I hate the fuckers on Twitter. All they do is brag. They don't help anybody. They don't post charts. All they do is bash people that they don't help dumb. anybody, dude. So this is so we are trying to change it. And they, dude, they bash me the other week because I post my charts and it's ugly, but they don't post any charts. So they're losers, right? But anyway, so we're gonna so continue to look at my Twitter, guys. Whoever is fucking watching this shit now, take a look at my Twitter. I know Twitter sucks. Just just follow me only. Don't need to go outside because all these other guys are fucking idiots. You, um, they've been bashing GME and AMC and calling the people dumb names and stuff but today they're all quiet they lost their fucking ass you know same thing with the tesla short guys you know by my advice to you guys is we are i mean most of you out here are not not looking to make a million dollars a fucking day not looking to make even a million dollars a year trading imagine if you supplement your income make 200 bucks a day i mean you'd be hella happy <clears throat> and so don't listen to these guys Making money is easy, guys. It's controlling your emotions to keep the money that's hard. If you make $200, you want to make $500. If you're up for fucking $1,000, you're like, why didn't I load up and make $2,000, right? So you, it's it's keeping your emotions in check and look at CELZ, man. Did I fucking call that shit? I think so. Yeah, there was the VWAP one. Yep, yep. When it breaks VWAP, you cut. Yep. So, I mean, shit. I'm... Well, and David just said it perfectly, dude. It's 3 p.m. It's too late to be shorting this anyway. So if yeah, you lost on this, PM, technically, we have the 3 PM you deserve it. Guys, we have that fucking 3 p.m. rule we talk about, dude. When 3 p.m. comes, you better not be fucking Done. strong stocks, guys. You're going to get fucked. Guys, right here, you just draw a line on your chart. If you're short past this line, you're honestly asking to take it out. You're just kind of asking for it. This is the time frame where you have a short edge and then the first hour. So obviously these are three minute charts, guys. So they look way, they look way more condensed than a one minute. This is actually, this is an hour uh, within these white lines. And then this is an hour. So it's actually a decent amount of time to get some trades in, but those are your edges. Any short outside of these white lines, you're actually kind of asking for it. Unless you use the outermost line on a, on a, on a really good scale at, you know, at a level where you have an edge, like, but, but this is where to make the easier money. We, we yep time based rules guys we, we time, based rules. time based rules all the time yeah man crazy this is this is uh this is all the chop this is the chop and if you want to learn channel trading it's not that you can't learn channel trading usually a stock will set i'll just draw some random lines just to kind of show you guys for a frame of reference but you know in the middle here then you have channel trades you know what i mean but this is the shorts these are the shorts this is the channel trades then i just don't like the last hour for fucking anything dude not even longs i i think the last hour you just wrap up dude Honestly, that's my personal. If you guys have a process within the last hour, go for it. But I don't like longs or shorts during that time. But I would definitely not be a short, hundred percent. I don't know, Bao. You've you've been known to actually hold overnight, like every now and then, like a long. If if you like the last hour, huh? Yeah, I held. Um, yep. So I mean, it it, it works, so, but hey, so I, the ones I would hold long overnight are the day one low floaters that got fucking squeezed with uh that's way over VWAP that needs to be closed way over VWAP cannot be hovering VWAP cannot be it, it just you know that that you know is going to be I only hold the the, the squeezers if I'm going to do it that's and don't, don't chase high you have to have a wash so a, a secret for holding a long position overnight is you have they have to have cleaned out the stock meaning they need to get rid of the profit takers as much as they can and then trap the shorts. So what they do is you, you looks really, really strong, really, really strong. It's, you know, and then boom, you see a fucking candle down and you think it's over because it looks like a death candle. But then you look at the VWAP, you're like, holy fuck, it's still way over VWAP. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, it starts so like this way over VWAP. VWAP yep. And it slowly, slowly walks up and then, you know, you're fucked. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> chased down there is fucked. Because shorts it's the are coming before the storm. Yep. So those are the best plays, guys. The plays that you, you need, they clean out because if they don't clean out the the fucking 
profit takers, the, the profit taker is going to be, be the pain in the ass and the sell all the way up. So they need to clean out the profit takers, the weak profit, uh, the weak longs, and then trap the weak shorts or trap new shorts. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And the thing is guys, is like, this does sound like, <laughs> should I sell a, uh, somebody on YouTube? Should I sell AMC today or sell later? I want to hold though. Bro, you got to know what you're in, man. You got to know what I'm you're in. Three, dude. This is a greedy. I mean, dude, who the fuck knows, to be honest? Who the hell knows? But all I can play with is probability. You may, it may, you may be right today. You may be wrong tomorrow. But over time, you know, it averages out. Repost, who, who asked that question, where's your average? Tell us, where's your long average? It don't matter what the average is, man. I'm just curious. Yep, but uh, you, your average better be fucking low. Like, are you down on it? Or are you green on it? Or... <laughs> If you're down AMC today and you're long, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that means you're chased. If, if, if you're down today, guys, okay, I'm telling you now. If you are a long trader, long bias trader, you're fucking down on AMC today. You got the, you, you are. You're a you chaser. Got, you, you, your strategy is fucked up. You will, you will, not a matter of if, you will blow up eventually. Well, because, yeah, I mean, think about it. If you're down on AMC. a day fucking two, high as fucking volatile stock, and you're down, this stock is like, you know what I'm saying? Um, people that buy today probably got in like yesterday, the day before, last week, last year, right? Um, if you're fucking, new, this is how you get trapped, man. You know, your friend calls you up, says, and AMC is running, running, and they, they fucking buy. And then you didn't look at the chart. This shit's been running for two days already. Is up huge tomorrow's day three. Yep. And then what happens is tonight they're gonna, they're gonna call your grandma, tell you like AMC, your grandma's fucking so happy. She's gonna fucking put a buyout for the open, and that's how you get the gap up, and then boom, it takes down. So tomorrow I anticipate a gap up, maybe hopefully, if it gaps up, pair box, and then that's the top. Dude, it, 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 bro, it's like the same thing with coin, right? Like Coinbase. It's like, dude, it's, it's, it, people get so hyped up. You know, this IPO this year, bro, me and Faye knew this one guy. Not, he's not a part of MIC. Bro, he had like 400 shares of coin and still has them at like 410 average. We're just like, Jesus Christ, dude. These are the people that just, they lose everything, man, because they have no plan. It's not, bro, the, the guy who posts on YouTube reposts, we're not, we're not cranking on you or anything, man. We're just telling you, have a plan, bro, because when you ask questions like that, it, there's no way. I don't want you to be know what you're you. in. I mean, the thing is, you're trading against fucking professionals here. You're fucking, and the only thing you're doing is praying and diamond hands. That's not enough. That's not enough of a reason to be in a stock. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just because you hate the institution that you're in this stock, that's dumb, dude. You know what it is, man? The institutions are the ones that are setting your ass up. Uh, the ones that are selling are not the fucking institutions, dude. The institutions yeah. are the ones that are buying this shit low, pumping it up, and dumping it out, right? Yeah, I, th I think the safest thing to say is, will AMC be back down these levels? I would bet my life on it. Do, does it go to 40 before it does? Who knows? Who the fuck knows if it's if this is the top or it goes to 40 a share before it comes crumbling eventually back down to 15? Who knows? But the point is, is like, if you don't have a process, you're just, you're just never going to make money, man. Because say you make money on this trade, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. The next trade and the next one, you have bad habits. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to lose on those. So you're just always going to tread water until you go, look, I short because of this and I long because of this. Like there's, there's a process that you can build around, not, hey, should I sell my AMC or not? Like there's nothing to that. There's no, there's just no fundamental process is I'm holding a stock that's hyped up. You're just guessing where to buy. Yeah, literally, list. literally, get. You're throwing darts. You're throwing you darts. Have have, you have to have a systematic way of fucking uh, figuring out when to buy, when to sell it. And, and, and we're only you know using this as an example to help. Truly. So we we you know we talk about the lines, um, the lines of support and resistance. So that at least is the system that I use. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, the guy who posted this on YouTube repost. The thing is, buddy, you got to understand is day trading. So, like we talked about time based trading, this is day two. So, when you have day one of a run, which nothing really happens a day, and then it explodes, that's day one of a new move, a new catalyst. This is day two, and then the further along progression of days that you go, the less chance you have to make money on the long. So on day two, I don't even le ever like longing on day two. But if you long tomorrow on day three, you're technically a fucking idiot because you don't know. And people just don't know what they don't know. Day three, you don't long a stock. 
it usually gets crushed. It's statistical math. And if it doesn't get crushed, hey, congratulations. Again, pat yourself on the back. You're going to lose on the next one because you built bad habits, right? We're just trying to be as real with you as possible because it, it takes thinking outside the box to be a professional trader. It but takes the, that. But the thing is this, guys, these things can go on forever to a million dollars. Who the hell knows? The most likely not, you know? But, so what you need to do is at least put a plan out. If your fucking plan is to say, I want to hold this shit forever, you better be okay with losing all your money. If you're okay with losing all your money, then good luck to you. Now, I'm not going to tell you not to fucking, you know, get in or get out, right? So that's the thing. It's up to you. If you, who, you should invest money that you're willing to lose everything. If you're yep, not, yep, yep. then you can have a plan. If you don't fucking give a fuck about your account, the money that you use, that's called gambling. And if you gamble, make sure you gamble with funds and money that you can afford to lose everything because that's gambling. Bro, that's that's the best thing uh, we've said in a long time is Bao just said it. If you're invested in a stock like you're doing, buddy, and not day trading, because when you're day trading, you have a plan. If you're invested in a company, you should only put in the maximum amount that you literally, if it went to zero tomorrow, you go, well, I was invested. I didn't day trade it. I actually bet on the company, wanted to basically essentially, quote unquote, buy a piece of this company. And if I lose, I was willing to take that bet. That's the trade. <laughs> Is I'm investing in this company. I like this company. If they fail, that was the, the quote unquote trade. But a day trade is very, very different. Very different. I've got yep. money invested in companies where I believe in the company so much. I'd rather go to zero than sell for a loss because it went down because it's an investment. It's not a day trade. A day trade says if it breaks this line, you get it out. But even if you're investing, guys, you, you, I mean, and it sucks Only to you lose all your money. It sucks to lose all your money. My advice is, you, before you get into a stock, even when you're investing or day trading, you need to make a plan. Yeah, hell yeah. You, the, a plan is not to hold this shit forever. That's not a fucking plan. That's gambling, guys. Uh, because you know what, man? It could go up to, let's say, $100, but your goal is to make $105, and then you didn't even fucking take a single penny off, and then it takes good zero. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the best time to make a plan is when you're not in the stock, when you are clear-headed. Definitely. Definitely. And, and guys, a plan is like, it, it, sometimes it could be as simple as, okay, you want to invest in a company? Um, like the guy who just asked about AMC, now he's asking about space. So, you know, he said, what do you think about space? Again, like this is more of like investment talk of a, hey, like, what do you think of the company's fundamentals? Who's behind it on a day trade there? Nobody's day trading this right now. Cause there's nothing, there's nothing, there's, there's just no edge, right? There's really no edge in this, but you have to look at the company fundamentals and look at their cash flow and everything. If you like it, who's behind everything? Like, there's so many factors to that. But then, asking, you know, what do you think of space? What do you think of space? What do you mean? What it like? You know what I mean? Investing is very different than trading. Yeah. People, I mean, what you're trying to do is find us get a stock tip, and then the only. <laughs> and we, we, I don't do insider trading. I don't know anybody. Right. Just give me tips. So, asking anybody what they think of the stuff company is just stupid because they don't. Well, because and, and about to add to that, it's like okay, you're at a party, right? Let's say the stock is right here, up to say it's fifty seven. Say we're at this time frame, uh, six twenty eight. Um, of last year, say that we're here in 21 and you're at a party and some guy says, dude, buy space. This is the best thing ever. And you throw all your money in. Now it's trading at $9. And you're like, man, fuck that guy at that party, dude. That punch bowl was that. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's hey, like, dear. you can tell me your experience. I heard something. I'm not <laughs> it's like, it, <laughs> any, okay. You're saying you have some shares in space. Okay. Um, have a plan, man. Have a plan. Only put in what you're willing to lose if you're an investor. And if you're day trading it, know the lines to cut or take profit. As simple as that. Like yeah, everybody, everyone's, got, everyone's got a fucking tip from a friend they lost. And then, Correct. <laughs> I mean, I've done that before. So, I mean, that's the thing, guys. The, the, the problem is, you know, the thing is, man, you can listen to whoever. That's fine. You did, you did not have a plan. It's like when you fucking, when you, when you go and let's say when you go and then fucking sleep in the house, or an Airbnb or a hotel. You know what the plan should be? How the fuck do I run out if there's a fire? So yeah. oh, I, dude, that's so awesome. I, so I mean, fuck, dude. <laughs> now, like, that is such a good analogy, dude. That's what that's what it is, man. I mean, so they have it all over the place. A lot of these people don't fucking know. But the thing is, like, at least you know where the door is. At least know where the fucking door is. Like right? when you're on an airplane, they ask you, hey, in the case of an emergency, are you willing to help people by sitting in this seat? Then you go, well, fuck, man. If if the plane explodes in half and, you know, I'm helping people off the plane or we land in water, am I going to be that guy that's actually going to facilitate people getting out of this plane that's in trouble? Like it's a plan, right? Like it's, it's a plan. 
So in the theater, it's like, hey, where are the restrooms? Where's the exit? Just like Val said, if the Airbnb catches on fire, how the fuck do I get out of here? <laughs> well, I always see. I always say, okay, man, the plan is, what happens is one breaks into my fucking room, so I put a lock on. You know, that's that's the plan. If you don't fucking think about it, you're not gonna fucking even close the door. Yeah, man. Yeah. When the new world order comes, what are you gonna invest in? Bitcoin? <laughs> have a plan. <laughs> so that's the thing, guys. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You want to make money or not? That's the goal. You want to, the, you have, I, I'm serious about this, okay? If you want to make money, you have to ask yourself, am I here to make money or am I here to gamble? Yeah. If you, I'm here to make money, fuck my ego. Fuck what di- people call me paper hands instead of diamond. Who get the fuck? I'm making money. So, so that's when you can realize that, hey, man, maybe, maybe trading is not really me. I would like to gamble. So once you, once you understand you like to gamble, that is fine. Just gamble with the money you can afford to fucking lose. Yes. I love that. Love that. You know what, man? When I started trading, man, I didn't fucking care about making money. It was just fucking fun. It was gambling. And I was like, oh, shit. If I make money, lose money, it's okay. I, you know? But then I realized that over time, I'm like, fuck, money is more important to me than that ego. <laughs> so the guy that posted about the AMC and stuff, now he's saying, are you diversified? Well, I th- you're, you're asking a lot of questions, brother, as if this is an investing yeah. club. It's, yeah, this is not investing, dude. What, it, if you want, you can fall for the scammers that says, hey, give me money. I'll trade for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, look, I know we're called My Investing Club. Like, obviously, we di- differentiate across a lot of sectors. But, I mean, we mostly focus on trading. Hey, what's up, Trinidad? What's up, buddy? Um, yeah, so, so you know, if you're looking for something where it's like, hey, man, here's a stock tip and, you know, boil down this company's fundamentals and invest. I mean, we're not that community specifically. We're more of a teach day trading community. Um, but I think you would learn a lot by joining us because the questions that you ask are very preliminary, which is okay. If you learn how to trade, you can invest for yourself, guys. It's exactly. That, that's a much better way to say it than I was I mean, going to say. You, you're right now, all you're asking is, is this a good company? You're not even asking the most important question. Where do I buy? Where do I sell? You know, like, fuck, okay, just because it's a good company doesn't mean that you're going to run out and buy the shit, you know, for whatever price it is. You're, just, you're an idiot if you do. Yeah. You don't know where to buy. You don't know where to sell. Uh, this is why c- people get scammed. They they are they are told to never sell, never sell. Bullshit. Well, and I mean, the guy that's telling you never to sell, or the guy selling. Well, the and CEO, guys, the CEO is uh, fucking selling. Well, Bell, let's let's look at how Diamond Hands has been treated for a while. They were saying Diamond Hands at four eighty three, GMEs at one thirty eight. I'll bet those Diamond Hands hurt. Um, let's talk about AMC. Um, let's pull up the chart. Pull up the GMG chart. Yeah, there's AMC. Dollars, dude. Look, look. G- AMC from fucking fifty bucks, seventy dollars. Diamond dude. hand your ass. Your diamond hand just turned to coal. Dude, not even that. Dude, coal at least you can use it to burn shit. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, dirt, man. Dirt, dirt, dirt. The thing is, most of these people that buy this are buying on margin, so you already wiped out, man. It doesn't even need to go to zero because you you maxed out your two to one buying power. It went down fucking half and you're already out. Oh, dude, that's that's what happens at Bow. That's what happens in Bitcoin every other weekend is 21 gets, you know, 21 million gets liquidated. 40 million gets liquidated. A billion gets because, dude, there's people are on crazy margin. It doesn't have to go to zero. It's just got to drop 10 percent. Yeah, man. People, that's what people don't understand, man. You get into fucking I, I just feel bad for these guys. But shit, I'm going to do right. Yeah. <laughs> Ruben, this screenshot I sent you yesterday talked about the scam saying it was you. Yeah, uh, guys, we should note this real quick. Um, Bao, myself, and Alex have a lot of people on Instagram, guys, that are scam accounts that copy our profiles and DM you about crypto or oil and that. Just be careful, man. Just make That's sure. That's not that us, dude. It's not hey, us, dude. Hey, it, hey unless, unless you're some hot chick, <laughs> uh, why would I DM you? I'm, no, I'm just joking aside, but you know. But dude, why the hell would I just DM you asking for money? What, who the fuck are you? Correct. Well, the fast, only, the only the way, you are. guys, the only way you're going to get a DM from any of our team, because I actually talk to a lot of members through DMs on Instagram, is you have to hit me up first. I'm not just going to randomly hit people up. So if you're asking about a link or something, yes, that's me, but flush out the real account. Obviously, does MIC follow that account? Do I follow MIC? Like, guys, it's very easy to flush well, out her real account. I mean, if you if you follow the scam, think of it as a learning experience. Just like if you lose your fucking money trading, think of it as a learning experience. Yeah, dude, don't pay some guy in Bangladesh, man. You know, to crypto to join MIC. That wasn't us. Get educated in life as well as in stocks, guys. 
Um, one sec. Uh, DTRV. Hey, Tosh, what do you watch for on your big cap long apart from RSI? And when do you stop out if it doesn't work? Um, yeah, buddy. So I don't really day trade big caps. I'm more of an investor on big caps specifically. Now, options is a different story, kind of like day trades with lines. But when it comes to big caps, I like companies on massive RSI dips. And even further than that, sometimes just super oversold that I'll start getting in. And if it tanks more, I get happy because now I can, um, I would say, averaging down in a really good company is very different from averaging down in a stock. So it's more of, obviously it's what Bao said earlier. If I'm investing in a company, it's very different. I'm throwing in money that if I lost tomorrow, I'm willing to take that bet on entirely because I love the company, but a day trade is very different mindset. So, but yes, RSI for big caps is massive, massive edge. So just, but if you can wait for it, if you can wait, it's, it's patience. Um, Addy B. Yep, I think that okay. Those are all the questions on YouTube. Yeah, guys, see, this is the, this is not us, man, dude. We don't like guys. I hate to say it because like I love every single one of you, but we don't have time to DM you on Instagram saying, "Hey, what's up, man? How you doing?" <laughs> Bro, we're educating. We got a company to run. Why would I give a fuck? <laughs> no, man. Who the fuck are you? I mean, like, we don't know you that's on Instagram. Way. Yeah, you have to you have to fucking understand the skeptic way, right? I mean, this is a big learning experience for you. You know, like <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, what's guys. up, man? Hey, talking about this shit. Like man. we don't have our own issues and troubles of life. Hey, what's and the going worst, on? the worst, guys. I don't want to put anybody down. Or anything. The worst is when when they they send it to me and say, "Is this you?" Like, the fuck. Why would the fuck you? You're asking me if this is me. This is me right now. You know. <laughs> is this you? Uh, why would it be me, bro? <laughs> yeah, fuck? now it's me. Who the fuck is? <laughs> why would I create an account that looks exactly like my fucking account? Change some of the names around and ask you what the fuck is going on. You're asking me, is this you? Why would I just fucking? Anyways, guys, it's just stupid stuff, guys. It's just really funny, guys. It's like we're we're not gonna ask you for money. Uh, hey, can we take the real for questions people. now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's gotta be one of the worst fucking uh, webinars right now. <laughs> 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 we used to have a lot of fun until today. Uh, uh, oh, so much about scamming, man. Um, yeah, like the trader, I'm coming back from a long break from trading. Is there anything in particular that you do to get back into the swing of things after you take a break or vacation? Bow, I think you're really good at this one. Yeah, slow the fuck down. Slow the fuck down. <laughs> Bump the brakes. Yeah, watch to see what's going on. Uh, don't get too FOMO. Stick to the process, especially the thing with this, man, when you're so excited to get back and there's huge FOMO, he's like, I'm going to dip my toe in the water. And so you, you would take trades that you normally wouldn't do normally. So you ask yourself, would I do this if I, if that was not so freaking like, you know, anxious to make the trade. So uh, get a tab, get a tab, get a tab. We talk about this all the time. Oh yeah. A tab cures a lot of the human issues, human problems, human mistakes you make because human mistakes can only be fixed. Um, hundred percent with another human you can create fences around your things i see this okay so uh disciplinary issues discipline issues uh i don't want to revenge trade but i'm gonna hit my max loss and the system takes me out but then there are some guys that will fucking call back their broker and say remove that constraint you know what i'm saying so i mean the technical thing can only go so far the human factor, you, you have to trust your tab. Like today, I checked them on my tab. I checked them on everybody. Every day, someone checks on me. If Bao disappears for a little while, even Bao goes, takes a shit somewhere, <laughs> goes to pick up DoorDash, where's Bao? You know, <laughs> you didn't lose on a trade because if Bao goes quiet, something's going on. Those are the things that you have to have a tab. So take a look at everybody that's successful. They have a fucking tab, guys, a trading accountability, buddy. And that's what we set up at, uh, MIC for. Not necessarily just only to trade and learn to teach a trade, but to create a community where you can find the tab. So you guys out there, it's like, oh, I don't need to fucking learn anything. You know, but but why are you losing? You're losing because you have discipline issues. You have human problems that can only be fixed with a human being. Dude, then, Val, I literally said in the beginning of this webinar, bro, I said anybody that says, hey, I figured out this or I figured out life, run from those people. They don't know what they're, dude, they're not open to learning and growing, man. It was like, like one of the first things I talked about. Get about. a tab. Get a tab. Don't be freaking lazy, dude. The yep. problem with getting a tab is now I got to listen to my tab. My tab tells me, stop trading. I got to stop trading, you know? <laughs> um, so, you know, you end up finding a degenerate tab that matches you. So that's even better, though. Okay, you find yourself with a degenerate tab. At least, you know, at least, like, you look at the degenerate and go, God damn, he's a degenerate. <laughs> and then you stop yourself, you know, because you're a degenerate, too. <laughs> yeah, you fucking degenerates.
But sometimes, like, you know, I go drinking late, and I'm fucking, I'm like drunk on my ass, and I look at another idiot who is even more drunk than me, go, damn, that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is the funniest shit. When Bao looks over and sees someone and says, man, he is in bad shape, that's when you know it's bad. <laughs> I look over and go, that motherfucker is drunk. Cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Addy B goes, is Ty Lopez a good tab? That's hysterical, bro. <laughs> Dude, Ty yeah, Lopez that, apparently I got so much shit. I know, a lot, I know a lot of guys in MIC has called their broker to lift their fucking max loss. Hell yeah. yeah. I know it. The worst thing is you, they ask because there's a risk profile you can create in DOS and that that option is grayed out that you cannot use it. But some guys ask to be turned on. They, so they turn off their own. They do their own risk profile themselves. Like, <laughs> fucking idiots. Oh, freaking sell Z. Damn it. Okay. Next question, guys. Oh, shit. I was looking in the mirror. <laughs> So that's the thing, man. Get a tab, get a tab. Slice down, slice down. Widen your. A lot of the errors you can make is by sizing down. Yep. And some, if you're too early, guys, start one line later. If you're always early, start one line later. That's another trick. John, you can see why this failed little pump right here is like, where's the volume, man? And guys, always pay attention to volume. It's like, that is not enough volume to make a, a real runner. Like, this is just going to peter out. Like I said, if it crosses the 40 to 50% threshold, then you have trouble. If you draw the line of the, of the morning uh, volume that goes up to this level, it didn't even hit 40%. That's how you know something is just not strong enough. Like, you need volume to really push the stock. <clears throat> But again, I'm not an advocate of shorting in the last uh, hour, let alone the last half an hour at all, no matter what the volume looks like. So be safe. I was one piss. I was like, fuck. I stuck to my rules. So I was like, okay. I think it went past VWAP. You have a value build good habits. So, so this is the thing, guys. So that I'm looking at that. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm looking at the VWAP. It's under VWAP. But the thing is that CELZ, you see they cleaned out both sides. They cleaned out the shorts and the longs. So they close they close it out. If this thing was way this thing, if the VWAP was way lower, I that would be a good long candidate overnight. But it's under VWAP, so it's kind of scary. So I wouldn't touch it for the long exactly. time. Exactly. But if, if if the VWAP was like fucking two dollars, and they just cleaned out the stock and the stock didn't crater down and went back to support line, right now it's that support line. You know, it'd be a great candidate. Overnight is very risky because you have no control what's going on. But if, if I was going overnight, I'd rather go long than short because if you go short, fuck, dude, the percentages are huge. I can lose. If you're down, you're down huge. Dude. Uh, so I just small cast. I avoid overnight most, most of the time because uh, CLZ is going to become tomorrow's low-hanging fruit, which someone asked was a low-hanging fruit. Tomorrow's going to I'm going to fucking hammer this shit. I hope it goes to 340 again because now the lines are established. Definitely. Addy B was just saying, dude, a good example of 3 p.m. roll. I am IMPP. Thanks for showing us, bud. Dude, I'm telling you, this last hour, man. Ugh. IMPP? Petroleum, oil. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I mean, INDO, too. Well, don't you get FOMO, motherfucker. I'm telling you. You have 20 minutes. I'm going to go long. <laughs> Be careful, bro. You're the chasing ass, motherfucker. I'm going to try something. <laughs> oh boy no, no, I'm not long that stuff though. Dude, you I'm guys not, try I'm to be tab sympathy. partners with Bow. he's uncontrollable <laughs> I'm trying to long the sympathy version of it there you go so which, which stock is the sympathy of IMPP guys is there news? no dude there must be news on there's no way it goes that much on oil gotta be news of something there it is Aim momentum is uh, company has announced earlier the closing of previously disclosed offering dude IMPP just had a fucking huge ass offering Crazy. But now it's closing. They, so they closed. So they basically sold 60 million. Jeez. So now they're ready to pump for the next offering. <laughs> Seriously, man. It's like, all right, we cleaned all you motherfuckers out. Now it's time to get it back up. So I was looking at the INDO because I thought it was simply to that. Um, who knows? INDO has always been moving with IMPP, but IMPP is up on its own bumper news. So, but there is yeah, no reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the 20 day chart. Look at this 20-day chart. That. that was the offering. There's no, there's no reason to be short that fucking stock. Uh, 
um, not before the news came out. It was a flat line for three days. They, they cleaned it out already. Oof. Uh, man, I'll, t- I'll tell you one thing, man. Being a short seller for so many years, it is really fun to be caught in one of these. Like every now and then I used to swing and you wake up to this. You're like, damn, my day's done. <laughs> your week is done. Your month is done. I don't, I don't swing trade small caps, especially on the short side anymore, but that's a pretty fun morning to wake up to. I'm not going to lie. I miss those days, man. Me and Alex used to swing short everything back like five years ago. <laughs> you just can't do that shit anymore, man. Yeah, you can't do that shit anymore. You just can't do it anymore. But God damn, that used to be fun, man. I remember the olden days. <clears throat> Things uh, change, guys. Um, who yeah, said? Up and adapt. ENSV and INDO. Yep. <sighs> Ooh, CLZ. CELZ, man, they caught these chasers, man. They caught these chasers underwater. Oof. Oh, shit. That's a fakey, fakey, fakey. Boom. What a miss. What a miss. <laughs> Let's see if it breaks 285. You and your webinars. <laughs> that was like, I lost money because it's damn weak. This webinar. We won't. I could have nailed it. <laughs> it's like walking to a bar and be like, man, left early. All those girls were there. I could have nailed it. Yep. <laughs> if I just had if I just had two more hours at that bar. <laughs> Guys, any closing questions before we call last call on this webinar? Any closing questions? Like 10 more minutes. You guys have any questions? Man, these are always so much fun, man. Woody. Low hanging fruit for, oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh shit, could have nailed it. <laughs> Low hanging fruit for tomorrow on CELZ. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Hopefully it closes right here and doesn't break down too much. That's what I call a big naked short. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a naked short. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to him I don't, dude, that's me man i'm not joking i've been, I've been eating so much hot pot and all this shit you see on it that's a david <laughs> okay that's fucking funny <laughs> um, you guys yeah, cannot man. make fun because you guys you are, guys are going to hell man you guys are going fat to hell. i'm fat and alcoholic so i so you know like you know i'm asian so i can make asian jokes i'm fat i can make fat jokes <laughs> i'm old i can make old jokes i'm, I'm an alcoholic i can make degenerate jokes I was like, I'm trying to corner every topic of discussion possible for Joe telling. Oh, what? Hey, remember when Val, you love Seinfeld. Remember when Tim Watley converted to Judaism? He's like, he's converted just for the jokes. Hey, I have a white friend, so can I make white jokes? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. So so now I just need to marry like a a race that has the ultimate jokes. Oh, yeah, man. Dude, this world, dude, I'm telling you, man, this world is so beta anyways, dude. You can call me a honky if you want. I don't give a fuck, dude. Everybody's so sensitive, man. Make the jokes, dude. It's all funny. I don't know why calling someone a honky makes them feel bad. (laughs) What the fuck is a honky? Because, dude, we just live in this generation where everybody's so sensitive over everything, man. It's crazy to me. Just endless beta men. Where are the alphas, man? Where are the alphas? Well, I'm like... (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out like the uh, their origins of that word. <laughs> well, honky. <laughs> but I was like, how come white people are called honky? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, dude, I cracker is a bad one though. I actually looked up one time why they're called. Cra- dude, that's a terrible one. Like the the history of that. I was like, oh my god, that's bad. I'm not even gonna say it. You guys can Google that if you want, but I was like, Jesus Christ. I'm, 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 I'm even fucking offended to walk into a cracker barrel. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's not your style, is it? <laughs> no, I'm like, dude, I avoid all that shit, bro. <laughs> I, before that happens, I'm going through my Twitter, deleting all racist shit before I get canceled. <laughs> Cancel Bow. Cancel Bow. He made too many fat jokes. <laughs> They're gonna do it. They're eventually gonna find some shit on everybody, guys. I, I, I made a curse word. Uh, they're gonna cancel me because they're cursing in, in maybe 50 years from now is outlawed and shamed upon right i said too many f words so eventually breathing is gonna be like illegal they gonna be like you're breathing air man that's you know it sucks dude it's kind of like man you know man unfortunately if the culture accepts it at that time 
sometimes people make jokes about it. Doesn't mean that they're bad people. They just, you know, at that time was unaware, right? Just fucking unaware. Bro, my fa- my favorite Bao, and actually, I think you're actually a lot like him. You're like the Vietnamese version of Bill Burr. You know who Bill Burr is, the stand-up comedian, right? Bro, he says everything on his mind and you know he's just a funny guy like he's just a comedian so if he says something fucked up it's like dude take it for face value he's a goddamn comedian he's meant to make jokes <laughs> here if you guys don't know who i'm talking about i'll show you the white version of bow hold on here you go this is bow if he was a white guy dude, he has no hair Fuck no you. we're not talking about physical appearance <laughs> i mean dude you guys personalities is like identical hey but his wife is uh african-american Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. I think so. No, what? He's got joke telling immunity. He could probably tell any joke he wants. Oh. A, With yeah. Tim Watley. <laughs> Dude, Bill Burr is literally like my favorite guy on the planet right now. He's just hysterical, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Any last minute questions, seriously, on trading or this webinar or anything to help you for looking for tomorrow? Um, anything. Who's, who on YouTube wants to join but is unable to join and why? Is it money and how much money you're lacking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe we'll so throw I'm someone a ball today if you speak There up. are some people that show up every day. To, uh, I mean, every webinar. I'm just really curious as to because maybe we can help you out because we, we um, Alex has been giving away like free monthlies to some people, things like that. So text Tosh and tell him why. I mean, if you wanted to join, why have you not? Be honest, money issues. I mean, that's the same thing. But you know what, man? You have to have money also to trade. So the first thing you do is invest in your education. But I wouldn't want you guys to go bankrupt uh, trying to fucking learn trading. Yeah. Like, you have no money to trade. Well, guys, the, the, the power of proximity is everything, right? Like they say, like your network is your net worth. It's true because like, dude, even if I didn't have, like say, say this was nine years ago, right? And I only had $2,500 to my name. I wouldn't try to trade that money. I try to get in a community like MIC or, and I'm not, look, I'm not even just plugging us. I'm just saying you got to get in the proximity of people who are doing what you want to be doing. It's going to rub off. It's going to motivate. You're going to hear the right things. That's going to keep you like, dude, you get like, you join MIC with your only freaking $2,000 instead of trying to trade that. Now, maybe you get so motivated, you go do doubles at your normal job, make way more money because you're just filled with all this freaking superpower excitement. And, and then there's your money. Like, it's just, it just makes sense, man. Proximity is everything. Well, yeah. Maybe you have issues and stuff. Let's talk to Tosh. We can make some exceptions. Yeah, that's a different story for sure. Yeah, I mean, dude, there's there's literally like third world yeah, countries. Uh, so where what happened is we, we used to have, uh, for those that know, we used to have monthly, you know, but the problem with monthly is people was not serious about it. They go in, they cause trouble, and then they leave and then what happens is you can't learn in one month man and so the, yeah, the ones awful. that come and join that leave they, they blame it on us and i'm like dude you know, it's, you know so let me tell you something i go to the fucking gym i have a gym membership i'm fucking fat am i gonna blame on the gym <laughs> the fucking gym is gonna make me fat no dude i didn't fucking have the discipline to follow the the process the gym gave me right the trainer told me to do this i'm fucking i went to eat mcdonald's with the trading guys for some reason in trading look at him he joined mic but then he's not a millionaire i mean dude he could be he fucking studied and listened to us but how many people do that if all of us had listened to our parents don't drink alcohol go to bed early go to school you know go to school go to school you'll be a you, you 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 have a fantastic job guys good health but we, we don't, right? I know drinking is bad, but I'm fucking here killing myself every day. So that's the thing with human nature, guys. So uh, discipline is very difficult. Um, having a tab, having Tosh and Alex and the rest of you guys have helped me tremendously because, man, without you guys, I wouldn't want to fucking even come here to do a webinar. I have to wake up to help with MIC. So those are the fences I put around myself. So if it takes joining a community like MIC and making friends to keep you in check, then do it. Because without a community like MIC, dude, I'd be degenerate somewhere else. Dude, and Bell, you know what's crazy about that? Bro, I was literally just thinking that. Could you imagine the days where all we did was trade and then, like, maybe after the first hour, like, you literally have nothing else to do? Bro, it's like suicidal depression. It's so fucking boring. Dude, that was me, dude. I Bro, it was all of us. It's like, what the fuck do I do I, with I, my I, life? I showed up fucking two days a week, make my money, go drink the rest of the week. 
bro, like drink all day and do a coma because there's nothing else to do. So it's like, it's like, bro, MIC like saved your life. Yeah, just talking about this makes me want to fucking drink right now. <laughs> <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> I think you might need some therapy first, bro. <laughs> therapy is only for people that have problems. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, someone quote Val and put that on a t-shirt. Therapy is only for people who have problems modern rock. Yeah. We has for quitters. There ain't no fucking quitter, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. That's so good, dude. <laughs> oh, we do call you. You guys do. Oh, it's been a while since you guys did the tra- uh, trainer's rehab or some tra- clinic rehab. Yeah, we're going to have to do a clinic here in a bit. Yep. Oh my so God. Man, that's so funny... trading is an addiction guys. It's when you, you just, it's like, it's like going to the slot machines. They do the lights, it blinks and then it gets you addicted because it's the reward system, in your brain, right? The dopamine and all that shit. Same with making a good trade guys. So you have to be very conscious of that, that sometimes over trading because you're bored because you know, because you need this constant stimulation. The problem, that's the thing, man. I can't go back to a normal job. I need constant, constant, constant dopamine. Con- that's why, you know, be, I drink whatever the hell it may be. So you be conscious of that. Being a trader, you know, you need to have a good support system. And I'm telling you, man, MIC has great people. And without these great people, I would not be where I am. I'd be on, I, I probably wouldn't need to work because I don't need to work. I have enough to not to work. You know, uh, but you know, I feel great now. I, I still drink, I still party, I still do what I need to do. But you know, I, I'm I'm alive, I'm functional, I'm helping you guys. So that's you know, that, I'm enjoying my life. So, um, and I'm a good example, guys. Seriously, of you don't need to be perfect to make money and to do well in life. I'm not perfect, man. I <laughs> I show up maybe three times a week, and I you know, but you know that if so, if you're more disciplined than I am nowadays, I used to be very disciplined, but nowadays I'm not because I don't need to be but I want to be, um, then you'll do great. Think about this, man. If Val can fucking do this, and he's a fucking, he's half time, he's drunk and stupid. Fuck, imagine what you could do. Imagine if you applied yourself, you know? That's what I'm saying, guys. I'm giving you guys a motivation. Don't I'm like, dude, I, I, I set the bar pretty low for myself. And so you guys are like, you guys have totally exceeded. You know, follow the process, guys, follow the process. And if you take a look at all the people in MIC learning, man, all the moderators, they came from knowing nothing, but now training the MIC way, you know, the process, dude, it's fucking, look what they're doing, man. Uh, Tony's been around. How are you doing, Tony? Seriously. Dude. Look at Tony. You know, he's been around for a long time. So, I mean, a lot of the people here is like, I've known him for a long time. You see, uh, all these guys that are MIC for life, man. Those are the guys that you should be tabbed with because they're committed. Okay. And those guys are doing well because they're committed and they, you know, this is not just a, you know, like a, a monthly thing for them. This is their life. So Tony, man, I, I, he was telling me he quit his job. Right. Tony, did you quit your job? Maybe we'll have you on a podcast one day. You know, he, he quit a really good paying job to fucking do this. And I told him, don't do it. Don't quit your job. But he did it. And hopefully, uh, hopefully things are going good, Tony. Dude, Am I getting yeah. the right, Tony? Right, this is the Las Vegas guy, right, Tony? I, I think so. Yep. Yep. So good. Tony, it looks like you're I doing jujitsu so. with a dragon in the job, background man. or something. But you love you you love what you do, right, Tony? This is this is a fucking dream come true for you, right? So that's the thing. So if if you make it your passion, dude, it's like it's not it's not even like coming to work. I love doing this. So for me, I'm I'm coming to to get my medicine. My medicine is the day trade to help people, right? So this is a good thing. It's not even like a your job. medicine was Hennessy. Yep. So money aside, whatever the hell it is, it's just, dude, just happy, man. I fucking hate going to work before. But the thing is, I used to love going and being an engineer, but at some point in your life, you know, you reach the, it's not, you know, people change, you know? So I enjoy what I do now, so. Well, it's like chapters, right? It's like, about just because you had a previous chapter doesn't mean that goes on forever, right? Like you got what you needed out of it. Yeah. On to the next chapter. Yep, yep, yep. Like growth, man. Yeah. To- and, and, and also non-coincidental, how many fucking times have we seen Tony in these webinars and he's getting it or other webinars or endless content? No, like, even, forget the webinars. He's coming to every single meetup, dude. That's what I mean. Yeah. He's like number one stalker. I love it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> bring the MIC flag. I love it, Tony, man. Keep doing it, dude. I want to see your trades, post your trades, take advantage of the community, Love you know, uh, get all the resources you want, man, because you're a fucking MIC for life, brother. I'm, I'm going to fucking, hopefully I'll be doing this until my life is still around, but that's my intention, man. I, I do this because I fucking love it, man. Hell yeah. It's like what I posted, uh, 
the other day. I'm gonna post more links for you guys to, to see. Let me see. Fuck, where is this shit? That's hysterical, <laughs> Bobby. They win all the wins, man. That's hysterical, man. I know. How many wins do we have in here, man? Seriously, we have a lot. I think we're like the chat room with the most most ethnic makeup. Like, I mean, gosh, bro, we are one hundred percent the most. We have, diverse women, we have women moderators. We have male moderators. We have every ethnic race you can imagine. No, for the love of God, dude. The three creators are Caucasian and middle or and European, Middle Eastern and Asian, dude. It's like you can't get more diversified. Dude, we, we, I think we, we, you know, we, I, I support immigrants. I support everybody. So, I mean, this is, this is why it is, man. It's an open family. And so this, so I'm like, you know, don't, don't ever be afraid, man. I, I grew up very poor. I understand. Dude, it's <laughs> um, super diversified. Like my, like, that's my why head. I said the guys on YouTube guys talk to Tosh, text him and see what's going on, man. Cause you know, we, we can run other programs. You, you know, we see you around at the meetups, man. You come, if, if we're in, near your town, you know, show up, guys. Say hello. Definitely. All right, guys. I think uh, I think that's pretty much everything. I'll uh, close this out before you get deafened by the TD Ameritrade closing bell. Um, dude, so right now, you know, just if you have any questions, guys, just text me, obviously, at 213-458-5997, uh, like I showed you earlier. Um, and then we'll be back in the uh, After Hours channel or wherever to talk about anything. So here's your chance to network and get back. And, uh, guys, we'll see you next week. Yep, and the guys in YouTube, this is your chance to, to, to text Tosh. Yep, and text me at 213-458-5997. And guys, if you have any questions, broker liaison for Success Trader to get started. Yes, sir. Super fun as always, guys. Val, catch you next week, buddy. All right, man. See, see you guys man. back in see uh, you guys. after us.